There are three distinct stages to the development of any commercial diagnostic application. In this video, we will review these stages in relation to the use of aptamers rather than antibodies. The first step is aptamer identification. A key difference between aptamer identification and antibody identification is that for aptamers it is possible to apply knowledge of the diagnostic application to the discovery process. What I mean here is that it is important to determine exactly what you need the ligand to be able to do in the diagnostic application. Then use this knowledge to design a selection strategy that will provide you with an aptamer that does this. Considerations include the matrix that the target compound will be present in, what other closely related compounds are present, and what level of cross-reactivity is allowable. Also what level of sensitivity is necessary. Specificity and affinity are not the same thing. These are selected for differently and can conflict with each other. It is a good idea to choose what balance between them is optimal before starting selection. See, already this is quite a different thought process than it is for antibodies. Given that aptamer-based diagnostics are the new kids on the block, I think it is important to focus their initial use on targets where they represent a clear advantage over antibodies. In order to sell a new technology, you will need to be able to demonstrate a compelling advantage over existing products. This means identifying targets for which it has not been possible to identify antibodies, or targets where the specificity achievable with antibodies is not sufficient. We also like to model the relationship between affinity for the target and the cost of aptamer production. The lower the affinity, the more aptamer it will be necessary to use to obtain the necessary level of sensitivity. This modeling process will enable you to set commercial targets for aptamer affinity at the start of the development process. Once you have identified an appropriate aptamer, you are ready to proceed to stage 2, the use of this aptamer in a diagnostic device. There are a broad array of options in terms of proceeding, but really these fall into two basic approaches. The approach that we have used in our commercial aptamer based diagnostic kits is to divide and conquer. We separate purification from detection in two steps. First, we use aptamers in affinity columns to purify the target molecule. Then we use the aptamer as a tool for detection. This was necessary, I think, in order to achieve commercial performance levels with a new platform. The affinity column approach also opens the market for HPLC analysis. The next generation of diagnostic strategies involve the quantitation of the target molecule directly without a purification step. We have succeeded in developing lateral flow applications with aptamers as well as the use of antisense reporter systems in free solution. The key here is to use a reporter system that will not be affected by variation in the quantity of other compounds in the matrix. This is definitely the future for aptamer based diagnostics. Now for some more detailed considerations. With aptamers, the first step is to trim the sequence down to the minimal amount required to achieve the desired level of binding. We have not found that this trimming process affects specificity. This is different from antibodies in that we simply synthesize shorter and shorter sequences of the aptamer and check whether these shorter sequences still work. The shorter the aptamer, the less expensive it is to synthesize. It is also useful to work at the same time to optimize binding conditions. The species of cation used and the concentration of cation can improve binding affinity by at least an order of magnitude. It is also necessary to characterize how binding is affected by pH and by buffer composition. Here we are looking for a buffer in which the aptamer will work the same regardless of small variations in pH or buffer component concentrations. Aptamers have a built-in system for secondary antibodies. It is called homology with antisense strands. A key advantage of aptamers is that they naturally pair with homologous oligonucleotides. This is a bigger advantage over antibodies than it might seem at first. With the antisense sequences, it is possible to engineer the optimum level of competitive binding with the analyte. By varying the length of the antisense molecule, it is possible to vary the effect of this reporter molecule on the binding equilibrium. You can optimize the system for maximum sensitivity. We have found that this is difficult to model because the aptamer affinity for the target molecule is based on tertiary structure. This is probably the subject of another video. 
For now, let's just say that this needs to be engineered by trial and error. Now you have a diagnostic application that meets your specifications. You are not done yet, though. It is now necessary to maintain this level of performance as you move the application through the development of a commercial production process. One of the first keys that we have discovered is that it is crucial to define acceptable tolerances on the purification of the synthesized aptamer. If the aptamer is to be immobilized in your diagnostic application, it is important to develop a system for achieving this with a low level of variation from one production run to another. Every component of a diagnostic application has the potential to affect performance. If you change anything at all, generally because you have negotiated a lower price for a given component, the performance of the entire system needs to be reevaluated. Throughout this process, it is necessary to work towards a fully documented production system with specific quality control tolerances for each step. This is not a trivial exercise. The key is to be able to work through this process with maximum efficiency so that you can bring your product to market sooner while minimizing failures in getting there. We have worked through all of these steps with our own commercial aptamers. In many cases, we have definitely learned from our mistakes. We are now prepared to provide our expertise for this entire process to work with you to help you commercialize your diagnostic aptamers. We are the only company that has experience in this area. I will say that an awful lot of what has been published regarding possible platforms to commercialize aptamers and diagnostics simply do not work very well. We know what works and what doesn't and why. We have been successfully providing a custom aptamer development service. Our success with this service has led us to realize that there is a need for services to move from identified aptamers to commercial products. We will provide this through the same basic format that we use for custom aptamer identification. We can either do all the development work ourselves, or we can provide your team with guidance and you can do it yourself. We will provide you with a quote following a discussion of your needs. We are also prepared to consider licensing aptamers that others have developed and running these through our commercialization process. In this case, we would provide you with a royalty on the sale of diagnostic kits based on the use of your aptamer. We have experience developing commercial aptamer-based diagnostic kits. If you have identified an aptamer and want to see it commercialized, please contact us to discuss. We will evaluate the quality of your aptamer and the market potential and based on these considerations, we'll decide whether we are interested in negotiating a code development agreement with you. Please contact us by any of the means below, and we will try to respond as quickly as possible. Thank you for listening.